Me and my friend are enjoying Ag Week here on campus, coming up on ATV News. COVID-19 hits campus again. How monitors caught it early. How UDOT hopes to make this common sight a little less common. We'll show you why people are coming from out of state to run in Logan. Have your first wheel full. We have trial sweater weather coming up. In sports, I've got a buzzer beater from the pros, and we're taking amateur to the most amateur levels. All that and more, this is ATV News. Welcome to this edition of ATV News. I'm Lisa Feinstein. And I'm Sydney Ho. Coronavirus hit another dorm on campus and 483 students need testing. Eric Price is live at the LLC. Eric? Thanks, Lisa. I'm here in front of the LLC where 15 students tested positive for COVID-19 and Building C. Now, earlier today, there was a mobile test site behind me gathering their manner of tests students had who not yet been tested. Administration says the students are safe and should be felt left in good, they are left in good hands, but some students feel otherwise. Swiping her key to get into the building, freshman Victoria Anderson says the recent outbreak in the LLC made me kind of scared when I first found out. As people walk through the now still and quiet LLC, reality sets in. Now that the situation's like a lot more present and to me it just it really hits hard. Making sure that we're on top of all of that. Checking emails and the COVID communication system, Amanda Dorito wants students to know that they are in safe hands. We know that you know some students are really concerned, some are like okay whatever I'll just do what I'm told, but we want to make sure we're meeting the needs of everyone and we also want to make sure if students feel if their anxiety levels increased or anything that they know that they have resources. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Talking with friends about the cluster of cases, LLC resident Emma Davis says she doesn't like the uncertainty. It makes me feel kind of nervous and like it, there's so much unknown about it. Davis, who is a resident in Building A, doesn't have to quarantine because the outbreak isn't in her building. But she says... I just hope that it doesn't spread too much. For the remainder of the containment process, students are required to not go to class and only socialize with people in their household. Eric Price, ATV News. Back to you at the desk, Lisa. Thanks, Eric. Coronavirus cases are on the rise as we move into the fall season. Cases in Cache Valley have gone up 209 cases since last week, making it about 2,600 total. In Utah, the total is 65,000 cases, rising 5,312. Nationally, we are at 6.93 million cases, rising 300,000 from last week. Governor Herbert extended Utah's state of emergency because of the recent rise in coronavirus cases. This means businesses with Department of Alcoholic Beverages control licenses can keep licenses even if they close for a short time. This means fewer requirements for telehealth, Parole hearings can be online, and those who are retired recently can return to work without loss of retirement benefits. K-12 students are back to full days at school after virus risks kept them at home half of the day. I'll show you what Logan's school board is trying to keep kids healthy. Students in Logan are adapting to regular hours after a soft open changed the school day. We felt that the best way to come back into school in person was to take a soft opening period where we had half of our students come in the morning, half of our students come in the afternoon. COVID restrictions left Logan schools looking for ways to keep their students safe. Longhurst has worked to keep everyone informed about the changes. That soft opening period really was instrumental in helping students feel safe for parents to feel safe in sending their students to school. Primary and secondary schools will reopen to full days after having half days for three weeks. 
the school board met on September 8th to make the decision. Of approving the proposed plan. As the school district moves classes from part-time to full-time, parents are pleased with the precautions being taken, such as social distancing. They've done a great job keeping us informed. They've got, done a great job at keeping our kids safe. District officials say students have become comfortable with new safety measures during the soft open. It's proved to be very successful. Our efforts in keeping them safe and healthy have shown us that we did the right thing. Officials say they are optimistic cases will remain low. Students are less excited to be back in school full time. I liked it better half days. For more information on precautions schools in Logan are taking, check the link on our Facebook page. There will be some changes to Utah State's schedule for spring 2021 semester. Classes will begin on January 19th instead of January 11th to help stop COVID spread. There will be no spring break to make up for lost time. And there will still be a holiday February 15th for President's Day. We will keep you posted with any further updates. BYU and UVU presidents are warning students that they will take dramatic actions if COVID-19 keeps spreading. The presidents released a joint statement for students to follow quarantine guidelines and to follow local health officials. They also advised students to follow all safety requirements on campus and all state and local mandates off campus. They say if conditions don't improve, they may quarantine campuses for two weeks, close the campus to the public, or change classes to online for the rest of the semester. Getting vaccinated or tested for COVID-19 can now be as easy as getting a Happy Meal. Health departments across Utah now offer services curbside. You're welcome. Flu shots at Bear River Health Department look different this year. You can now get vaccinated from your car, a new process Bear River is trying to minimize virus risks. So far, it's worked really well for us to be able to um, serve people just curbside. After helping older people, McBride says she's gotten great feedback. This is so much easier. Don't even have to get out of the car. With drive through vaccinations, older people avoid exposure and the logistics of getting in and out of buildings. And it's not just flu shots. We're doing hotspot testing today at the Maverick Center. Protective equipment on, Salt Lake County Health Department now offers free drive through COVID testing. It's been a great opportunity to be able to get out into our community and to be able to provide this service for people. Car after car comes through as workers help more people. I think people um, like the convenience of it being set up in their community um, and no, you know, no barriers. There's no appointment that needs to be made. We set the hours and they can come anytime that's convenient for them. Employees fill out the form for you so the process stays contactless. Kay says that's so anyone can get tested. I mean, that's the whole focus is, is to provide this for, for people that wouldn't have access otherwise. Lisa Feinstein, ATV News. Bear River Health Department says getting vaccinated is especially important this time of year as flu season is coming up. For more info on drive through testing and vaccination sites, check our Facebook page. Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg died Friday evening because of complications of pancreatic cancer. The second woman appointed as Supreme Court Justice, Ginsburg served on the Supreme Court for 27 years. The Harvard Gazette credits her as chief architect for the ACLU Women's Rights Project and for equal pay legislation. The New York Times called her the leading women's right, rights litigator in U.S. history. She wasn't just, you know, this liberal justice that was, you know, just interested in liberal progressive issues. She was interested in creating a fair and equal society for every one of us. Flags are at half-mast in her memory. If you've ever driven fast down a steep hill, you know how important brakes are. Robinson Mile shows you how Garden City is dealing with trucks losing their brakes on their way into town. The Shell Station and Bear Lake Market are next to the busiest intersection in Garden City. This three-way intersection has had five trucks run through it in two years. It's pretty crazy. Usually I can just hear like a big sound, like something crashing, but you hear all the customers come in the last time we heard, quick, I need a fire extinguisher. The manager of the market thinks that the truck's brakes are failing or drivers aren't using a lower gear on the canyon's steep descent. 
you know, we realized that there's, there's an issue and we better, we better get after it. And so I went to UDOT and said, we got to fix this. If a truck loses its brakes on the way down the hill, rather than go into town, it can now use this new truck ramp, which is a pretty unique design. Trucks that use this ramp run into a series of cable nets and those cable nets then stop the runaway truck. This is the first ramp of its kind in Utah, and there are fewer than 10 nationwide. We don't want people to have to use it, but we're excited to be able to have it as an option um, to ha increase safety in this area and hopefully make the people of Garden City um, a little more comfortable. A speed limit just for big trucks was added to the highway as well, along with new mandatory brake check areas. I think with all the things that, that, uh, that we're doing, with the signage, the ramp, the brake check areas, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that that's, that's got to help us. Robinson Miles, ATV News. Mayor Lenhart believes that this will help the problem of trucks running through town, but acknowledges that it will only work if drivers use it. Coming up, we will have Ting Yu Chang with the weather. The current temperature in Logan is 81 degrees. Races are a lot harder with COVID. Find out how these triathletes overcame coronavirus and weather to compete. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back to ATV News. Organizers with pandemic fears canceled marathons across the country. Boston was supposed to be last week. What can a runner do after all of that training? Josh Davis shows you one solution, run in Logan. Those are cheers for the runners finishing the marathon, but runners like Louis Tobias are cheering that the marathon even started. I ran my first marathon a couple years ago, qualified for Boston, and then it got canceled this year. The male marathon winner came from New Mexico. He says he was looking for a marathon for a while before finding the Logan Marathon. I put a few months of training in before it was canceled, and I was pretty stubborn, and I was like, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to find a race to run. Planners say that 55% of registered people were from outside Cache County. Well, I was going to train for St. Uh, George, which was October, and that got canceled. It's hard to get motivated to train when you're not sure whether or not you're going to race. Virus risks have forced marathon organizers to cancel all over the state, making these harder to come by. We worked with the state health department to make sure we were in compliance with what they would like us to do. Precautions included a staggered start time to ensure there was enough distance between runners. Saxon says he was just glad he could see the runners in person. We're just grateful that we we're able to uh, still hold this event because people were really anxious to get out and, and do a, a race that wasn't virtual this year. Josh Davis, ATV News. The race director said everything ran smoothly. The only thing he would have changed was the weather. And if you thought that looked hard after weather, we'll show you athletes that did more than run. Now to Ting Yu for the weather.
Hi, I'm Jin Yuxian, and uh, here we are looking at the national weather here. So let's take a look at Washington area first. As we can see, there are lots of clouds hovering around the area, which means in the nearly future, there, are, there will be heavy rain in the area. And let's take a look at the Midwest area. As you can see, there's not much weathering, go not much weather changes around in this area. So if you are planning on going out at the weekend, Midwest might be your best choice. And let's take a look over here. This is the area where Hurricane Sally takes place. And um, Hurricane Sally has been taking, has been hovering in this area for a while now. And it also caused whole lots of heavy rains and also the damages around in this area. So if our audience are planning on traveling to this area, please take a measure and also protect your own safety. And can we please take, uh, take a look at Utah area? So as we can see the Utah, there's not much weather changes around here, but the upper, upper Utah. So if you are planning on going to upper Utah this week, please make sure to bring an umbrella. Then let's take a look at the forecast for this week. So as you can see, most of the days are going to be sunny days except some cloudy days here and the temperature. So most of the days are going to be pretty warm by the weekends. And also the uh, temperature difference between day and night are relatively large. So make sure to bring your sweater and stay warm. And this is the weather for this week. Now back to your decks. Thanks, Jingyu. You might be able to run a marathon, swim two miles, or bike a hundred, but doing all three in one day is another story. Sam Walker takes us to the triathlon, where distance is not the only enemy. Cowbells could lift spirits, but not the temperature at the Bear Lake Brawl Triathlon. All of a sudden the conditions go south on you and there's, there's nothing you can do about that. You know, you can't fight Mother Nature. The racers had wetsuits and there were DNR boats watching them for safety. It made them feel a little bit more comfortable being on the shore side too, where if you got a little bit in, in danger, you could swim maybe 20 yards and start to stand up. That's the first time I've ever swam uphill. uphill. I'm here in St. Charles, Idaho, where the people participating in the Bear Lake Brawl Triathlon are really earning the name. It's 50 degree water with 20 mile an hour winds, and this is just the start. The full triathlon included a 2.4 mile swim followed by a 112 mile bike all the way around the lake twice and finished with a 26.2 mile run down and back the North Shore twice. Oh, it feels good to have dry socks. Despite the swim being rough and the bike ride being a little cold, I actually enjoyed it very much. We've been trying to put together COVID-friendly races. Most racers weren't socially distant, but Joe believes these events keep them healthy. We're the cure. We're not the cause. That's the way I look at it. Sam Walker, ATV News. On Hill Events is hoping to meet COVID restrictions and put on more events. And coming up. How can we make a difference in these folks' lives? F find out how these people recovered from a house fire. Some students are asking themselves to stay or not to stay. Find out why it's a difficult question. Hey you! Yeah you! Getting that college education? What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else? Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts? Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org.
sorry. I've got big ideas. As a college student, you have big ideas to make a big difference on campus. Why not get funding for those ideas in a big way? The Blue Goes Green grant provides funding for student sustainability projects. These projects help USU students be more environmentally responsible, live healthier, and save money. To find out more, go to usu.edu slash bgg. Get funding for your Blue Goes Green idea in a big way. Blue Goes Green. Make it. Disrupt Rondo. He puts it in. Here's Davis. 4 3 in the win. Oh, it's good! Well, ATV News, I'm Eric Price. Anthony Davis yelled Kobe after hitting this buzzer beater. Welcome to ATV Sports. I'm Eric Price. With that AD, the Lakers took a 2-0 lead in the Western Conference Finals. But as we've seen in these playoffs, Denver doesn't go away. Last night, the Nuggets took a 20-point lead going into the fourth quarter with a dunk by Jamal Murray. The Lakers will go on one last run with three by LeBron James. And a steal by Rajon Rondo will give LeBron an easy slam. The Lakers would cut the deficit to three with this layup by the King, but Jamal Murray would hit the dagger three to put the Lakers away. The Nuggets would win this game 114 to 106. The Eastern Conference had three days off, but will continue to play tonight at 6.30. Miami leads 2-1 in the series. In the marathon you saw earlier, a few Aggies ran and placed in the top 10. This is where Katie Haviland crossed the finish line in 16 minutes and 22.1 seconds, making her the top finisher regardless of gender. Following close after, freshman Maddie Geddes finished at 16 minutes and 22.7 seconds, placing first in her division. It was a great day for the Aggie men that competed in the 10K race. Sophomore Cameron Todd was also the top finish, finisher regardless of gender, placing with a time of 29 minutes and 3.3 seconds. Mid-distancer Josh Winch placed third overall, crossing the finish line in 31 minutes and 28.1 seconds. Harry Potter and sports combined into one? That's right, the USU Quidditch team is gearing up for their season this year. Running drills and draining quaffles, Adam Searle demonstrates the game of Quidditch to incoming freshmen trying out for the team. Searle says the season is looking a little different this year. We're excited, we want to get out. Right, we're excited. We want to get out and play this year. You know, uh, we're really excited to play, but we won't be able to play until the you know the end of the semester. Due to COVID, Searle says the Quidditch team will not be able to start its season until spring semester. Leading up to them, the team will keep practicing as normal. And a reels kicked off this month, giving students a chance to fix, get their sports fix. Tossing sacks back and forth, these students get to play cornhole as an official intramural sport, usually played at home. Aiming for the hole, Jordan Goldsberry says the game isn't taken too seriously. Yeah, so out here playing uh, cornhole for intramurals, it's just, it's mostly been, it's been fun competition, nothing too crazy. Just a bunch of people having a, a really good time playing cornhole. If you want to watch precision tossing, games are on campus Monday through Wednesday nights on the Aggie Legacy Fields. Cornhole isn't the only sport offered. Students flocked to play kickball last Tuesday night. Pitching the ball quickly and rushing to bases, Team Spicy Milk beat Team We're Here for the Exercise 14-2. The team was excited about the win. A little nervous, but I'm pretty energized. You know, we get hype. Team Spicy Milk cheers in excitement to an early victory in the season. To watch Team Spicy Milk steal another victory, go watch Kickball Monday and Wednesday nights at 9. Former Utah State football player Charles Tuck Playball passed away earlier this month due to sustained injuries from a fall in his home. Claybaugh played for the Aggies from 1960 to 1962 and was a three-year letter winner. He had a good sense of humor and that um, he can always have a smile on his face and laughed easily. 1960s catalog of Utah State versus Denver, he played left halfback. He helped Utah State win two conference championships 
and led the team to an overall record of 24-6 and 1. Uh, you all caught up on sports? Back to you, Lisa. Thanks, Eric. A family has been without a home for almost a year. Jonathan May shows you how a community helped them build a home. Put your hands up! A new house meant cause for celebration. Somebody's got something that they lost, which means a lot. Peebly is referring to the Morgan family. Their home was destroyed in a fire. However, with the help of others, they can now call this place their new home. We thought, how can we make a difference in these folks' life? So without saying anything to them for the past several months, we started working on the house. The home was mostly rebuilt on donations, with $22,000 contributed. This it just feels so great to give back to others, and, and what better than that sweet, the Sweet family, the Sweet Morgan family. Now the Morgans can enjoy their new home all to themselves. We're really excited to just move in and, uh, yeah, relax a little bit. The house is rebuilt over the ashes of the old one on the corner of the street. Jonathan May, ATV News. Kevin Peebly says he's thankful for the workers who donated, donated their time and effort on the project. Exchange students say they can't return to their families at home due to virus risks. International students have always been an important part of our school community. Basically you cannot travel back to your home country, pretty much wherever you're from. That sucks in case there's a family emergency or you need to go back for your visa stuff or you can't really go back. Um, that's a problem. Also According to Global Engagement Office, they say one student cannot come back. There's nothing they can do. Uh, actually, I bought the uh, ticket in my home, but in March they canceled my flight, so I cannot go home. As far as we know, most of the exchange programs shut down this year because of COVID-19. But how are the new international students handling about this situation? Institute in Taiwan uh, have had been closed from March. So uh, when we apply for F1 visa, we actually don't know uh, we, we can apply that successfully or not. Uh, in the end of June, and it, there is a new uh, information that they already start to uh, open some uh, interview appointment in July. There, how, however, suddenly uh, cancel all the interview appointment in in the July. So it's really weird, and we also shocked, and we don't know whether we will come to U.S. or not. ATV News, Ting Yu Chen. Students say they hope restrictions will be lifted soon to return home. A local quilt shop didn't know what to do when the pandemic hit, but is now reaching people all over the world with a new virtual approach. You found the colors that you want? Yeah, mostly. Customers can now come in for help at this quilt shop. There we go, 2083. Okay. But during the pandemic lockdown, the shop had to turn customers and employees away. It is the worst feeling in the world, letting someone go. To keep her shop afloat, Thurgood went virtual. I'm going to get on live with a few hundred people. I had never used Zoom before. All right, what's this Zoom thing? I, I knew my kids were doing it, you know, with classes uh, for school. Could we do the same kinds of things with classes at a quilt shop? So she set up cameras and a mic and started teaching. We're just making all these different connections with people that would have never happened otherwise. So it's like having this, this virtual classroom is, is just been an incredible gift. Employees connect to students all over the world in classes or on a daily Facebook Live. Good afternoon, Ruth, and hi, Marlene. And Elaine is joining us from Milwaukee, Oregon. She says it's really rainy. It's definitely not rainy here in Utah. People were stuck home. They wanted to have a friend outside their home, so they were tuning in. The classes they film right inside the shop are what have been bringing the most business. But what has been recently flying off the shelves is this fabric to make your own mask. That has increased the load a lot. People are making masks and they, they don't even know how to make a mask, but they're making a mask. Customers are learning new skills. I just kind of got into it and now I'm into it. It's fun. It's really fun. The shop even got a new space and more workers to keep up with the demand. Before I got tired of being, having my days off, we were back at work again. 
Workers at My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop say if you want to start sewing, it's never too late to pick up a new hobby. Thank you for joining us on this edition of ATV News. You can find more editions and news stories on our Facebook page. We will leave you with some shots of our little friends at Ag Week.